All right, over the next couple of videos, I'm going to take just a few moments and go over the primary modes that you'll be using as you work with Z-Spheres. Now, if you watched the last video, which was our little kind of practical rundown of the workflow, mm -hmm. you already know generally what each of these are here for, mm -hmm. but there are some tips and tricks that will make your Z-Sphere experience a lot easier once you know that they're there. Okay. So let's start off by creating a Z-Sphere object. I'm just going to come over here to the Tools panel, click on any one of the tools, and choose Z-Sphere, and drag this into my document like so. Immediately, I will press the T key and go into edit mode. If you forget to do that, you won't be able to edit the C-Sphere, so keep that in mind. Draw mode is pretty basic. You can access it by tapping the Q key, and to create a new Z-Sphere, all you really need to do is just click and drag. Now, as you're dragging, as you saw, what you're doing is you're defining the radius of that new Z-Sphere. If I hit Control z you can see the difference between clicking, which creates a really tiny Z-Sphere, and dragging, which gives you a nice control over the size. So I recommend you always drag when your mouse is on an existing Z-Sphere. Now I'm going to switch over to move mode for just a moment. I'm going to pull this guy out of the way just to give us a little more room. Now, if you create a Z-Sphere that you do not like, so for instance, if I drag out a Z-Sphere over here, and we'll move it some distance away so that we have, I don't know, some sort of strange offshoot, and I decide maybe that wasn't the best idea I've ever had in the world, in draw mode, you can alt click to remove. And that's a behavior you're going to see a lot in ZBrush, where the alt key allows you to do the opposite of whatever you were doing to begin with. It's not with every single tool, but it's very common. Like when you're sculpting, if you're pulling and you want to push instead, just hold down the alt key and it'll push. And vice versa. If you were pushing, you can hold down alt and you'll start pulling. Now, that's just for a basic creation. When you get started, that's probably how you'll do it uh, most of the time. But you can also click on one of these existing connector spheres. And these connector spheres don't really do anything in and of themselves. They're just there as a way for you to see and visualize the general volume of the shape that you're creating. But if I click on one of them, it becomes a regular Z-sphere. You'll see how it fit into the hierarchy. It is parented to the next person up the chain, and it is the parent of the next person down the chain. It's, it's important, excuse me, to know that uh, because it does maintain the flow of that hierarchy. And then we can move this around. And this is really one of my favorite ways to add more detail in. I will often just drag a Z-Sphere to the end of wherever I want a chain to be. I'll switch over to draw mode and I'll add a couple more spheres in between and then use move or whatever to rotate them wherever they need to go. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, just as a note, this is kind of an interesting aside. This may be more important to you if you are still using a previous version of ZBrush. If you're using a previous version of ZBrush, please upgrade. Uh, but if you alt-click on one of the connector spheres while you are in draw mode, and make sure you're in draw mode, uh, you will nuke those connector spheres. That can be a little visually confusing because by default, it's not really going to do anything. Um, it, everything's still going to behave the same. The reason I mentioned that it's kind of a legacy issue is that under the adaptive skin settings, if you're using an older version of ZBrush, you may get a result like this. So you may actually get a split in the division. Or if you have a single sphere that is kind of offset like this. So if I jump all the way back and let me just kind of show you something. Bear with me for four seconds. Three Two, I'm counting slow. Uh, one, click this guy out in draw mode. Blam, see, four seconds, perfect. Mm -hmm. If you're using uh, an older version of ZBrush, you may be able to get behavior like this, and that's because when you alt-click and remove out your connector spheres, this is considered to be an attractor sphere. It's not something that you'll be using with uh, the more modern skinning methods, but if you need it, if you like that behavior, you can work with that. I just thought I'd go ahead and mention that as an aside. It's not something that I'll be using a whole lot of because generally if I need to move my geometry uh, in a fashion like this, I will just go ahead and convert the skin over and I'll move it when I'm done sure. using my sculpting tools. But that's pretty much it. It's just uh, I just want to give a quick rundown of how the behavior works while you're in draw mode. Again, that's with the Q key while you're in edit mode. Are there any questions at all? No. All right, then that'll wrap this video up. Thanks a lot.